Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Here's a little preview of what we're going to be making today. I am super excited, you guys. This is for the October kit. It is the journal that I've decided to make. It's double-sided, so on one side it's like a file folder, and then on the other side it's those like pages. So like the file folder pockets, and then on the other side it just turns into pages. And I didn't even know it did this. I just made it expecting just for the file folder part and it turned out really cool. So we're gonna get started again. This is the October kit. Here's the October kit, a little preview of it. And this kit is awesome. I think it is just beautiful and a good mix for you to either make a floral kind of fall kit, you can go with the butterfly look, which is probably what I'll do, or you can even add some Halloween elements and this kit is perfect for Halloween. So yes, this is the kit I will be using to embellish that folder journal that you saw at the beginning. We usually try to make some sort of journal, and this is the one I'm making this month with the subscription kit. So you can check that out at pinkmonarchprints.com and use the code MONARCH3 if it's your first month and get $3 off. In the rest of the videos for this month for this subscription kit, I'm going to be embellishing this cute journal with all the things that you saw from the October kit. So stay tuned for that and we're gonna jump into the tutorial. Okay, first up is supplies. If you can get all the supplies, then you're gonna be set. I'm using five eight and a half by 11 papers for this kit and they're double-sided. I'm just printing on this kind of pretty solid colored paper and at 110 pound cardstock. If you need to adapt the sizing, that's fine as well. And then you're going to need 11 of these little rectangles and they are four inches by two inches and you are just gonna fold them all in half or you can use a scoreboard, but again, four inches by two inches, 110 pound cardstock, and they don't have to be double-sided, but mine just happened to be. So those can just be single-sided. You can do it in a different paper if you want, whatever you need to do. And this is such a tedious part, so I didn't want to drag you guys through it, but I did just kind of get them all in half. They were kind of fun to play with, but I just got those all ready. So 11 of them, folded in half, set them to the side. And you'll need a couple other small papers later on, but this is kind of all you need for the main folder, so we are just going to jump into it. Okay, so now that I have all my papers, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take one, and this is kind of an example of what we're making. This was my prototype, but I'm going to kind of show you guys how to do it, and the process is same for all five papers that you make. And I'm using a scoreboard, but you can just fold if you use a scoreboard, it is a little bit easier, but it's not too bad. Okay, so set your first paper out. I have my little measurements to the side here so I can know what I'm doing, but you're going to either mark little pencil marks at three inches and eight inches, the long way on your paper, or just use a scoreboard. This basically just allows you to be able to fold those papers in and have about an inch lapping over because we're gonna glue it there and you'll see that inch in just one second. So right there, it folds over and it's overlapping about one inch. If you're not doing about an eight and a half by 11 inch paper and you wanna switch it up and do a different size, bigger or smaller, just make sure that when you fold it in half that it's overlapping about one inch. Then you're gonna fold it or turn it the other way and um, score it at four and a quarter inch. And then just fold that down, put the pieces to, like I like to do both sides so I just flip it and then score it twice on both sides so the fold is a little bit easier. And then I just fold it together. I try to make sure to really get the fold down because it does get thick when you have like a lot of papers within one fold. So I sometimes will use like a ruler or this little tool to just really crease that edge. And one more thing I personally did, but I don't know if it matters too much, but you might want to do is that you, that little overlapping edge, when you fold it in, I try to make sure that it's on the inside. Um, so now we're going to glue it, and I'm just going to be using a scotch glue stick, getting a ton of glue on there, because this is essentially going to become a journal, so we want it to be really strong. So I'm adding a lot of glue, and then I just crease my edges. And just like that and then you already have the middle fold in so I'm gonna grab some clips real quick 
and use that to keep the glue strong on the edges especially. And that's really it. Like pretty simple. Just three measurements you have to remember. To crease at three and eight inches, fold it, flip it, and then crease at four and a quarter. And I didn't want to make you guys sit through me doing the same thing four more times. So just make sure that you have five papers total. Go at your own pace. And if you need to rewind the one part, feel free to do so. But yeah, I just had a lot of fun with this. It was kind of therapeutic just to go do the same process over and over again. Maybe that's just me, but sometimes it is nice to to just do it. And then when I was all done, it was really cool to see all of the papers together. And in reality, if you have all your supplies <laughs> ready, then it doesn't take too long. And we're on to step two. So grab those 11 little pieces of paper. Again, they're four inches by two inches. And I rounded out my edges, not even necessary, just something I personally wanted to do. And yeah, here we go on to our next step. It's one of the fun steps that instantly puts your folder together. So you're going to need the five papers that you just created and folded as well as the 11 smaller rectangles. And you guys can see that when you fold it, it created these little pockets. So what you're going to do is grab each of them and we're going to use those four by two rectangles to hold the edges together. Where my fingers are, you're going to replace that with a paper rectangle. All right, we can get into it. So grab one of your rectangles that has been folded in half and glue it pretty good. I am adding on a good amount of glue and really making sure to get the edges because I want this to be very strong. And you're going to stick that inside of the little pocket that you created, line it up in the center as best as you can, and then fold it down and try to get the other edge into the next pocket. So it took me a little bit on my first try to get, but by the end I had it down. And this was my first time doing this, so really not too bad at all. Then I just kind of made sure that the glue was gonna hold. And I let it dry for just a little bit, and this is kind of what it looks like, and that's what you need to make all of them look like. So. Do that same thing with the rest of your papers and just fold them inwards, grab your little rectangle, add tons of glue, and I I don't really know what else to say other than that. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do it on all of them, but I will finish this and then show you the next step. And truly, the more you do it, the better you get at it, but... I think just making sure that you get it centered and making sure that it's flush with the top was important. Mine were not perfect, but it still made the most beautiful folder by the end. So it's okay if you mess up. And a little hack, if you grab a ruler, you can actually use it to press down the edges on the inside if you have clumsy fingers like me. And again, you get better. I got better and better with each one. And I finished all five and we can move on to the next step. Now you should have five separate pieces and uh, you can probably guess where it's going but we actually got to get those pieces to become one so you're just going to do the exact same thing grab one of your rectangles add a bunch of glue and you're going to use it to connect the two separate squares together so exact same thing this time you're just you're just connecting two of them so it's not that complicated but it makes the world of a difference and i'm so excited about this it turns out adorable so don't give up if you're in the middle of this like don't give up you can do it <laughs> it's totally worth it and a pretty easy process looking back on it now so we'll speed it up again real quick and just kind of go with the process here it's really fun i'm really excited to see what you guys create and see the other paper patterns that you guys used i love this dark green but i know so many of the papers would have made a beautiful folder so I'm really excited to see that. If you guys want, post them on Facebook, please, if you do end up making this. I'd appreciate that. Um, there it is. There's the folder. How cool is that? It's already almost done. And it's just so beautiful and so fun to hold. I adore this. I cannot tell you guys that enough. So here comes the part where you need two more papers. They need to be the same size as your now finished folio. About the same size. So that's what those two papers were. 
and you need to connect them on the same way that you connected all the other papers. So you should still have two left over of the 4x2 inch rectangles. And I'm just going to, this part I just had to be a little bit more careful, but I'm going to actually put it inside that pocket just like before, line it up, and then just stick that rectangle under. It is a double sided piece of paper, 110 pound cardstock, same thing. And this just makes it so that the folder will be able to open fully, but I just make sure it was dry, and then I repeat on the same side. Well, the opposite side, I mean. So, yeah, not, not too bad at all. Just, I'll try to show you guys. Yeah, look at that. There we go. There's a good angle of it. But you just have those two on the very ends that are not pockets. They're just loose leaf pieces. And now we are on to the cover. So, you can make a cover out of paper. I chose to make mine out of chipboard just so it has a little bit more, what's the word? I don't know, just so it's a little bit thicker. And I also cut two papers of my choosing, also from the October kit, that I thought would make a pretty cover. And these ended up looking a lot like fabric. I was really surprised. I also grabbed some Mod Podge and cut my cover size, the chipboard, which is going to be the cover of the book, the... I don't know what you even call that. Why? I think it's just cover. I feel like there's another word for it, but I'm not sure. And I made it so that the cover was about one centimeter extra on each side than what the size of my folder is. And that's how I decided. And then my paper I'm putting on top, I the cover, the train paper you see on the right there, I tried to make sure that those papers were going to be about ha about... I think it was half an inch extra on each side to an inch. So you can kind of mess with that. You don't have to do what I did. A, I, it worked out for me, but if you want more or less paper, that's fine. But it did. This was ended up being a pretty good size. So like an extra half inch on each side would be great. After pressing down a ton and making sure that it was very smooth and I was trying to get all the wrinkles out, I actually just went in with some more Mod Podge on the corners and ended up kind of folding down that corner just one at a time folding them down like that trying to make it as even as i can not ski wampus <laughs> i don't know um, parallel and i just repeated that process on all the corners and i won't lie to you this part was extremely satisfying it was so fun to do so when you do it though just make sure that you're getting a thin layer full coverage but a thin layer so that your paper doesn't wrinkle up. I just use regular copy paper. You can do cardstock and all of that, but I just wanted to try this out and it actually turned out really good. So I repeated that on all of the sides. I also use these nifty clips to make sure that everything was secure. And then you just repeat the process again on the other one. It was fun, it was satisfying, I enjoyed it. Again, really get out those wrinkles. Start with your corners, fold those corners down and then you can do the other ones. This just gives it a pretty look. And I don't know what it was about this paper, but it totally looked like fabric when I was done. And we are on to our last step. So I went ahead and grabbed my little folder that I have created, and I started just mod podging one of the kind of loose leaf papers, one that's the ones on the ends that aren't pockets. And I just really put a lot on there because we're going to end up sticking it to those chipboard pieces. And I, I really did enjoy this, but just make sure that you're... The book opens up in two ways, if you remember. So just make sure that you are not putting on your covers backwards or upside down or anything like that. Just make sure you have it how you want it before you glue it. But it is up to you to decide kind of how you want it. I had to double check, make sure mine wasn't upside down. And then I put the cover onto my kind of scrap paper and then I pressed down the folder. I apologize, my scrap paper was also one of my papers that looks just like my folders, so I hope you guys can see good enough. But I did put this one on a little bit crooked, but the spine in the back was straight. And so I'll just have to put something in that spot later just to kind of cover it up. So just take your time on this part and make sure that you get it how you want. And then of course just repeat on the other side and add that last cover and 
yeah, just take your time. Make sure that those two covers are lined up. I know this tutorial is might seem like a lot because the end product is so cool, but it actually is not too bad. I'm already excited to make another one of these in the future and maybe a different size variation, but yeah, here it is. I'm going to be spending the next few videos kind of embellishing this, maybe even making a closure depending on kind of how much, how full the journal gets. There's a lot of space to work with and just some really fun little, I don't know, just options of things that you could do. So I know, again, that this tutorial, it might seem overwhelming, but it's actually not. Take it one step at a time. If you need to, you can rewatch the video. But yes, definitely, I already know this is going to be one of my favorite journals I've ever created. I'm really excited to see how it ends up looking. So I will link everything, all the supplies I, I used below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time.